Well, what's going on everyone? Thanks for checking out another of my videos. There's the boat. Out here at uh, Real Custom Boat Works, meeting Jim. We did all the work to it, outfitting it, and it's uh, done. So he's gonna go show me today all the work he's done to it and how to use the stuff. Good morning, Jim. Hey, morning, Chris. How are you this morning? Doing well, thank you. Yourself? Well, I'm happy to give you your boat back. Yes, I'm excited to get it. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, so you brought a fishing pole, huh? Well, while you're playing with all your new guys, I'm <laughs> fishing. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we'll, we'll jump on the boat here, get started, and uh, yeah, we'll show you all the things that Jim did to it. True, we got the guy mowing the lawn right now. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> so I think the first thing we're gonna look at is the rod holder system I got. It's from Bernawin. And uh, Jim introduced me to this brand uh, back in November, checked it out on their website and the equipment was so cool. So basically there's all these different rod holders I'll show you that fit in these different bases. Uh, I also have this 30 degree angle here one I'll show you for uh, like tuna fishing. Um, and you can switch it out, like it's the same size hole as that one as this. So I can take this one out and put another one of these bases in. So what are the different rod holders they have? Well, they have a... Uh... A variety of different rod holders. This is a casting rod holder. Um, they fit in the bases like that. They do have the ability to lock over your rod. Nice. Um, this you can use for a spinning reel, a casting style reel. Um, they are adjustable by a trigger here. So as far as bringing them back or forward, um, you can adjust them straight up and down. And then on the release, you just pull the lever and out they come. Nice. So you have a clamshell rod holder. Uh, that basically you can drop into place. It is also adjustable with this trigger here. So you can come back and give it a different degree as far as how you're fishing. Locks in, rod's locked in. And to get it out, obviously we're just going to reach down here, pull the trigger up, and the rod comes straight up and out. And then the next one um, would be one more like for, if you're gonna be using your downriggers and it's just a drop in rod, that obviously tilts as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you have your downrigger set up here, you can have your rod up here, twist it down or what have you. But a little bit lighter version. They all come with a, a leash clip, so you can put a leash on there and hook it to your rod just to make sure we don't lose them. As you can see, these are downrigger bases. So with this right here, you can still put a downrigger on it. So there's a, a base for it you have. Exactly. So for the Scotties like you're gonna have on yours, they come with that downrigger base. That's the same pre-drilled for a Scotty. So I'm just gonna mount your Nice, and then... Yep, and then you use that to so a downrigger here. Put rod the rod down. right there. Yep. That'll be awesome. And these are pre-drilled for all your Scotty bases. Mm -hmm. Ed Burnwood also has this bait board here. Drops into one of your bases, locks in. They have a knife, which I'll show you in a second. But, you know, used for bait, lures, what have you. And then they have a, a variety of these knives, fillet knives and everything else, but that just locks into place so you have a knife constantly at your bait table it all fits in their same base system so the knife you can go right into there and you know while we used this one up right here they give you a back right up here so i can put in essence a rod holder now up here the knife and then the 30 degree one that we'll be using for our tuna trolling just like so so Burnwood also makes a side mount or a vertical mount that Jim was waiting for me to get here to see where exactly we want them, but I think we're gonna put one like right there and right there. You'll see that at the end. Um, so then we could put, you know, rod holders, the knife, the tray, different things on the back of the boat as well. So then uh, we have the downrigger platforms here, and then Jim, you you installed some hookups for the downriggers. Well, so we did. I mean, obviously, as we with the electric downriggers, the 1106Bs that you have. We put in the actual plugs for those. And then also, just because the new wave of, of what people are doing now is going to electric reels, we put four more of these, one here and one forward at the uh, thing, just so that you have the ability to either hook up pot pullers, uh, electric reels, whatever else. Awesome. Um, so it just gives you options, or you want to throw a light over the board, overboard to light up for bait fish or what have you. Okay. Just gives you the ability to be a little bit more versatile. All right. And then you install these lights. Same lights, the Lumatec uh, Caprera 3s, and they're multicolored and dimmable, so you turn them on like the ones in your old boat. Yep. They, you want to fire them up? Sure. So yeah, these same ones I had in the last boat, but they're from, new style. From the switch, 
on and they'll get brighter, brighter, and brighter. And once they reach max, and or you can go down and go to blue, and then you can stop them whatever color, whatever brightness you want uh, with those. Nice. Excellent lights. This is the iTroll G3, so it's the newer version than you had in your old boat. Uh, does all the same functionality. Uh, very, it's backlit, so it's a lot easier to see. Um, has a couple new options. You do automatically have hunt built in, and then also on the slick, you now have little clicks there versus the old style, which was just turn. Um, yeah, the, and this one now has a remote control, so you've got a wireless handheld remote you can take to the boat and control your kicker from anywhere you want on the boat. So that is exactly as does the throttle for the kicker motor. Correct. So you know, sometimes you're out there fishing and you're going a little too fast, a little too slow, and you can't find that exact spot. Well, this has a dial from zero to 100%, and you can just really fine tune that exact speed you want. So back here is where we'll be controlling the kicker motor. Um, the steering wheel does you know, both the main and the kicker, uh, but this is the throttle for the kicker. So we'll get it started there and then use the eye troll to uh, get our exact speed. And then this here, we put in the 14 gallon Kodiak tank. Um, just again, same one you had on your old boat. Um, but what we did different here, and you can stand down here, is that we put a quick disconnect. So we do have water going to it. And if any time you don't want it, all we do is take that out. We've stopped the water feed. Uh, it has its own pump. And then this just closes up and it's, it's kind of clean. Um, but it has its own pump coming from the bottom. And we don't have any of that lost water like we had in the previous one where the water would backflow. This is all stopped by a check valve. Uh, so you can fill it up and leave it or you can have it constantly running. You put the switch in right there. Yeah, switch is in. And away we go. Uh, got the paper. <laughs> oh yeah, that's paper that comes inside the brand new ones. So. And then you did something with the ladder? Yeah, so uh, what we did and, and we found when we guys are putting these bait tanks on is the ladder obviously wants to fold down onto the swim deck. So I had Keith over at AWN uh, Marine Fabrication welded the two little dog ears that keep it vertical. So now, it op two options. I mean, one, it's not hitting anything here and it's up and out of the way. Two, if you do need to go out on the swim deck for any reason, net a fish, clear something, you have something to hold on to and it's vertical here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys will drop their bait net right down there so it's not in the boat, it's out of their way. Um, it's just, it's a much, it's a much mm -hmm. more it's a much easier way to work that than having it bungee corded against your bait tank. Hmm. Yeah, so from North River, from the factory, this came laying down on the deck here, but obviously because we added this, um, you know, needed to get this up. So I know a lot of you guys, uh, when I showed the video of me getting the boat here, you're wondering why I didn't get the tuna door. Um, I wanted the extra space. Uh, so if you have the tuna door there, you don't get as big of a compartment right here. And um, then I was also putting in the bait tank. So having a tuna door and the bait tank, you know, it would be in the way of that. Um, and also I like having the, like the ledge right here, the edge to uh, go against and lean. So if you're you know, out in the ocean, you're in this corner with, that, with the tuna door, you have like this indent right here and can't really lean against this side. Um, so that's why I opted not to do that. Another thing I didn't do, which a lot of people do is the um, fish box down on the bottom right here, you know, the opening door. But um, I didn't use it in my last boat at all and it fills up with water. So if you get water on the deck, it's not waterproof down there and so you use it as a storage but you really you can't get anything down there that you don't want to get wet because like i said water is going to get in there and it was just something you have to clean up at the end of the day all the time and i didn't use it so that's why i didn't get it and i'll be using kill bags or ice chests for the fish that i catch all right so jim's going to show us this light that he installed so with the go light the remote uh spotlight it comes with a handheld remote and there's options that have uh, a dash mount, but this is really nice to have and you can buy a secondary if you need it. Nice thing is, take this cover off of here um, and it's as simple as turning it left and right and it goes 390 degrees, so it'll actually go completely around and then some um, up and down and with the press of a switch, it's on. So good search light, good fog spotlight. Uh, works very well and nice thing you know I, I use mine mostly and I think you will too is in the docks or in a buddy's boat if they need something and don't have lights you have the ability <laughs> to light things up for them nice so yeah they work really really well uh, it does give you the ability to light up a lot of area versus just a stationary light mm -hmm. that uh, is in one spot very cool so the boats they don't come with the antenna for the radio or the radio itself but that's something that you put in there yes yeah so we put on a Shakespeare uh, 525 um, it's basically an eight-foot uh, VHF antenna. Uh, it's going to give you uh, quite a bit of distance as far as on the water goes. 
Of course, VHF is, you know, is restricted to what's in between you and that, but excellent, excellent uh, antenna. And what we'll do too is I'll show you in there, but um, your boat is equipped with AIS, uh, which is an automated information system, which allows you to see other boats, them see you, contact you. It's nice because when you're in AIS and you're cruising out underneath the gate, it shows you all these boats. Mm -hmm. Well, if you see my, if you list my MMSI number as Jim, you're going to see Jim and you can just go to that and hit call and it'll call you directly from the radio to me. It just doesn't have to go. You don't have to, Hey Jim, are you out there? Oh. All that shit just goes straight through. So it's nice. Uh, I guess now we just talk about the Garmin and get her started. Okay. We got two screens, one in the back here and one up front. This is using the information from the helm unit back here. So we don't have to have two different trans transducer cables. Uh, Garmin's really user friendly. Uh, you can bring up anything here. And you can go your sonars, you can click on your radar and turn it on from here. You can come over here to your charts and look at a fishing chart, which is going to give you all the information. Now we're on the water here at Bishop Cut. You can see that the boat is facing the right direction. But here, if I want to know what the tide is, I can push the tide. I know it's outgoing tide. It's a, it's a point, 0 0.9 feet tide there. We can go here to Paradise Point Marina. And once we click on that, you can go up here and it'll tell you what things Paradise Point offers. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more, but now you have this navigate to button. So when we get into the autopilot, if I wanted to drive here from somewhere, we just hit that button and away it drives. So. Autopilot. Autopilot, a <laughs> must have. There's our radar. And what it's showing us right now is that is the building. Obviously you know how to read mm -hmm. radar. Yeah. Um, so this is the channel going down and what have you, mm -hmm. but here we want to go over and nice thing about one of the one of the nice things about Garmin over Lorance is I can go on the overlay, overlay and I really like this feature. I imagine a lot of times we're going to be using charts at the helm and radar where you're going to mm -hmm. and then back here you're going to be looking at your sonar, your fish finder, yeah, your fish likely, finder yeah. type of stuff mm -hmm. here. And everything that the boat does can be controlled at either the helm or aft. So okay. you have two locations to do everything. So in here, same unit, just a little bit bigger. If you want to run combos, you know, where you have two different views or four different views in this, you've got bottom, side scan, down scan, charts, radar, whatever you want to do. It's very user friendly and you can't really mess it up. All you have to do is go in and start pressing buttons, see what takes you where. By the way, you can go straight to fuel if you want to just see your fuel tank um, when you're going across mm -hmm. there. Okay. And it gives you um, fuel used, what you have in there, speed, Okay, so from over here, if you scroll all the way to the right, you can get to your autopilot. So you're basically bringing up the exact same screen as you have there, and you can work everything from here. But once we get off the dock and on yeah. the water, uh, you'll see uh, how nice this autopilot is. And this Reactor 40 with the V2 Smart Pump is probably the best autopilot we have on the market. What it does is it is good for the small mo motion or small movements. Um, if we're only going to move over 10 feet, 5 feet, this pump will do that. It's got enough power to do that. Mm -hmm. Some of the other ones have a 1 liter pump. They work great, but they don't have quite the finesse that this one does. Okay. Oh, and then you've got the radar up top, which is a new Garmin 18HD3 radar. Okay. Uh, it's good to 46 miles. And, and the radar dome you have up top. And it's nice. It gives you the ability to target. You can uh, mark people's on there. So if you and I are in two different boats, you can mark me, keep an eye on me uh, as we're going out, you know, for buddy fishing or whatever. So you else. can mark a, a boat. Correct. You can mark up to 10 targets. If you and I are going out underneath the gate mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you see that mark fall off, it's either I'm catching fish, broke down, whatever else. Yeah. You have the ability to come right back to me. And then you put a fan in here for me? Ah, oh, we put a, well, you know what? It never hurts. I mean, I'm in the <laughs> valley, of course, and it gets hot, but yeah, just a little fan up here that gives you the ability to cool the pilot house down and it'll get warm with five bodies sitting in here. Yeah. Uh, so. Some hats. Uh, this hat belongs to Keith at the, the uh, fabricator at AWN, and I'll give you the information, obviously mine, and then Tom Bernwin. So where is the autopilot? Well, let's go back and I'll show you. Well, I'll show you where the pump is. The autopilot is built in. It's got a brain, a, a computer brain up front. Um, but then the autopilot here, you can see the pump here. Here's the pump and then the computer portion um, runs up front. So this is the, the V2 smart pump. And you can see here all the cabling that runs to the brain itself. Uh, but wait until we demo it. You're, you're going to love it.
And put a charger in too, it looks like. Yeah, we put a Pro Sport 3 bank uh, HD20 charger in, and that'll keep all these batteries back here charged all the time. Uh, just plugging it in at the dock or the house or wherever you're And where's the plug up. for that? Plug to here is back here. I use a NOCO if you want to look back here. Right here, there's a plug. So we just take the female end of the plug, drop it in there, and all three chargers are, I mean, all three batteries are being charged. Nice. And it's nice because it'll take it to a conditioning mode. So uh -huh. if you leave it plugged in for two or three days, you're not going to overcharge your batteries. You're going to charge them to full and then leave them circulating so the batteries stay fresh. Well, you ready to turn the key on this big guy? Let's do it. All right. First time driving her. <laughs> we have a navigational chart and a fishing chart. We're gonna to go to the navigational chart for now. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we're kind of where we're at. Go to the top of the screen, tap that, and hit go to. Now, right there it's gonna say engage your autopilot. So click engage, and let go of the wheel. Now that purple line, you can feel the boat's turning because it wants to take you to that purple line. Now, if for any reason you needed your steering wheel back, the log is in your way, whatever. See the little red standby down here in the corner? Yeah. You can do it there. You can touch that little standby up there, or you can just wiggle your steering wheel and it'll give you your steering wheel back. Now, once we get within time, there you go, now go back. So now, what it did is it says stop navigating. Okay, click that. Go ahead and get back up to, uh, up to plane speed. get the benefit of, because the motors are tied together, we get the benefit of the autopilot um, on both motors. So as long as the big motor's down, we can shut it off. It doesn't even have to be running. All it has to be is down. And now our autopilot, once we put this in gear, our autopilot is now going to, you can feel the boat turning itself. It's going to run it now based on this. So if we're just, if we're, if we slow down and we're just trolling halibut or whatever at your one and a half miles an hour, They'll turn even a little bit to accommodate for wind, a tide, whatever. They will keep you on track. And uh, it's always quicker driving in a straight line. So if you're going on, you know, somewhere a little farther out, instead of kind of zigzagging your way out there, that's kind of naturally how it happens, I would think, if you don't have autopilot. But now, you know, perfectly straight line going out there. We'll turn the ice roll on. We are traveling at 5.1 miles an hour. Uh, in a 25 foot boat on a 99 kicker. That's pretty decent speed wise. Um, and then the benefit to, again, one of the, one of the really thing, the things I like most is that run idle switch. And that's gonna be simply tap it and it throttles down. You fight your fish, reel in your lines, Ooh. whatever you gotta do. But that was your perfect speed. So we're gonna tap it one more time and slowly it will take us right back to that percentage. So much to learn, but check this out. So. Go here, hit engage. Now it's heading hold, so we're gonna stay at 95 degrees. What it, so you got the 10 degrees right port, here. 10 degrees starboard. So, so you can you, just do one degree yep. there. Oh, so you can just tap it a few times. Tap it a couple times if you only need to go three degrees. And, and where that comes in handy, obviously, is if you got someone coming at you or you see a log in the water and you don't wanna to get too far off course, you can just tap that. So hit your 10 degrees starboard or 10 degrees right. Yeah, and then you'll see the little yellow line go off and then that's what the boat did. Well, the sonar's working. Can you guys see all those fish on there? A bunch of stripers, most likely. Jim's getting geared up. I run a Yozuri shallow diver with a Kevin Brock one. What speed do you want? Probably about three and a half, four. Holy cow. Let's see if Jim can catch one of the <laughs> 2,000 fish on the screen right now. It's funny how the smaller ones are definitely towards the top more and the bigger ones are at the bottom.
All right, well, it started pouring rain on us out there. I think we ended the uh, tutorial just in time out there. I wanted to thank Jim again for uh, all your work you did in the boat. And no problem, Chris. I had a blast doing it. Thank yeah, you. and uh, got a lot to learn on how to use all that stuff out there. And go push buttons. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's a lot to learn. It's a computer, but you'll have a lot of fun with it. I feel it. like I know 1% uh, on how to use the boat now. <laughs> for sure. Hopefully a little bit more than that. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys are looking to get your boat outfitted, um, make sure you reach out to Jim. He does all that type of work, sells the stuff, installs it. Great resource. He's definitely happy to help you guys. All of his contact information below. Um, and now we're going to go ahead over to uh, VJ Marine. He's going to be doing the bottom paint for us. Not just any regular bottom paint. Probably something you guys haven't seen yet. I'll wait to get there to show you exactly what we're doing to it. So I'm going to get the boat on the back of the truck right now. And we'll see you at the next stop. Thanks again, Jim. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. All right, well, we just arrived to the boatyard here, VJ Marine, dropping the boat off. We got uh, Jonathan and Arturo. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? They're gonna be helping, us, helping me out with here with this next project. So that's gonna be doing bottom paint to the boat. Um, so I'm planning on leaving the boat on the water in a slip. And uh, cause it's an aluminum boat, we got to deal with the um, electrolysis and then also anti-fouling, which is all the algae that grows on the boat. And you know, bottom paint is ideally supposed to make that not grow on the boat as fast and easier to take it off. So what product exactly are you putting on the boat for me? So we're gonna be doing NASCO's, NASCO's Homex uh, Clear Foul Release Anti-Fouling Coat. It's a silicone based product that's uh, hydrophobic and prevents uh, algae from, well, not prevents it, but allows it to be slick and have it fall off a lot easier when the boat's underway. And that helps, they promote, it helps with um, fuel economy, it gets you speed and also protects as a barrier coat for the aluminum, prevent it from corrosion and all that stuff. Okay, so, so if anyone's planning on leaving their boat in the water, fiberglass, aluminum, whatever fiberglass, the material is, you yeah. would want to probably add something like this to yeah, it? Yeah, something like this. Um, that way it protects it, prevents it from getting blisters, algae, stuff like that. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, so I guess one of the first things you guys are doing is kind of find where the water line is on the boat. Yep, we're going to launch the boat, let it sit in the water for... Oh, an hour or so, make, get a good waterline mark, mark it, maybe go about an inch above where that, where this, we call it a scum line, where the scum line is, and then uh, haul it out with our travel lift, bring it into our shop, and then um, uh, begin the process. The process is tape the waterline off, uh, wipe it down, make sure that it's clean, get all any algae grease, degrease it pretty much follow the instructions for the application it's a it's a primer and then the the clear coat silicone based product goes on on top of the primer okay. so it'll be a clear and it'll be keep it'll keep it looking brand new while you're in the water so yeah so a lot of the paint is like black or gray um and you know you would notice it and i don't know i just didn't want like a black line or paint on the boat and so the clear coat seemed like the way to go and happy to find these guys be able to put it on for me so as we've uh, mentioned here, and you guys already know, so VJ Marine, they do the bottom paint, but um, Jonathan, what other services do you guys offer? We also obviously do bottom paints. We can haul out boats up to 30 tons, 60 feet. Um, we do full blown custom paint jobs. We've done, uh, we've painted Parker's, uh, Bay Liners top to bottom, where we've got two guys that are all grip certified that can do any kind of paint job you're looking for. Uh, Joko repairs, fiberglass repairs, decks uh just all kinds of stuff we're also c deck dealers so we work with a shop down in san diego called blue seas fab and we have a scanner scan decks and we can install c deck on anything you want to put c deck on have it custom made whatever you like yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and leave them with the boat now for a few days and then uh once they're done uh, i'll get a call and we'll kind of show you well you'll be taking some pictures along the way yeah we'll shoot some pictures and do some videos for you guys so that way you guys can kind of see the process and what it takes to get i think I, cool i think that would be interesting yeah. i'm definitely curious too uh to kind of see how this how you guys apply this and uh yeah the process and then yeah excited to show you guys their work when it's done and the clear coat we won't even see it i i guess <laughs> yeah, that's the plan that's the plan right on all right well thank you all right, man. thank you yeah, all right we'll sounds keep in good touch. all right Here we got Chris's boat taped off, started prepping it. 
hit it with 320 on the water line. And then on the bare aluminum, we're gonna hit it with 100 grit. That's what NASCO calls for. And should be ready to start applying later today. All right, so we just pulled back up here at VJ Marine. It's the day I get to uh, take the boat home finally and check out the work they did. They're loading it on the truck right now. And can you guys see that? There's the clear coat. <laughs> Looks really cool, especially on the white right there. You can't see it at all. So there's the line right there. I don't know if you guys can tell. But yeah, it feels like kind of like a gel coat. You can you can definitely feel it on there. Water beads right off of it. And yeah, it's covered all the way around all of this stuff. So how was the process? It wasn't too bad. Um, where we just obviously lifted off the trailer, set it on blocks in our shop, and then. Um, hit the where the paint is you got to hit it with the 320 grit to get to scuff it up and get the shine off of it get that top coat off of it and then on the bare aluminum you're supposed to hit it either with 80 or 100 grit we went 80 seemed a little aggressive but so we went on the on with the 100 grit a little less aggressive and then sanded the bottom and yeah started applying it the application process is pretty simple you just apply the primer that they then they give you a little sponge mm -hmm. and then you just start rolling on the 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 clear coat like 10 minutes after so that gets you get that chemical bond between the two nice so it wasn't too bad well i'm really excited it looks great <clears throat> i love this clear coat so you can kind of tell there that's where they did a little of sand on the aluminum just to apply it so it sticks better but yeah that's so you went a few inches above the water line then yeah we went about about two inches over where it sits in the water naturally that way when we start loading up from here and some fish mm -hmm. you can still stay and in, in, keep it nice protected. perfect yeah. <laughs> yeah all right hopefully you guys like it yeah i love it i mean <clears throat> i love that you can't see it can't see no black paint so if you guys are looking to get anything done like this make sure you hit up uh, jonathan and arturo here they'll be happy to help you and uh do whatever kind of work you would like if you want regular bottom paint or this clear stuff they can do obviously both um so really excited to meet you guys and likewise thanks for what you guys did yeah and thank you hope you guys like it we'll yeah. see you You're watching you on youtube oh hopefully you. <laughs> we'll see we'll see us uh, you'll see us out there fishing too one day that's right <laughs> all right all right well if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one it's time to get the boat on the water all right later guys <laughs>